First one on the agenda is roll call. Can, what I was like to ask, can we get rid of that from our meeting? Do we need that unless we start getting new members? Or no, I'm fine if we want to just strike that. I from think we all agenda. kind of. Okay. I can look and see who's here. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be your easiest task for the day. <laughs> just ask it. It's, it's mm -hmm. up to the board. Then. So. I'm okay with that if everybody else is. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, then we'll move on to approval of the previous minute. Is there any minutes, any discussion on the previous meeting minutes? Or if not, I'll take a motion to approval. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. That passes. Next. Coordinator report. Okay, so this month on the coordinator report, a couple of things. Um, I received an update on the Dodge County housing study. Um, Maxfield has completed um, a majority of their information. They were waiting on a couple of things from two of our smaller communities with regards to permitting and stuff like that, just because they didn't have the staffing to be able to pull it together quite as quickly as everyone else. Um, and we're still on track for a late fall delivery of the draft report. So I'm hoping here within the next month we'll have that draft report to at least review um, so that we can make sure we don't need to finalize or make any adjustments. Um, and then they'll set up the meeting dates for um, disbursement of the final draft report to the cities and townships. So um, just a little update on that. Um, Small Town Regional Vitality Investment Resolution. I uh, did put a copy of that um, in your guys' packet. Um, I think, maybe not. Um, but that was approved by council at their last council meeting. I believe it was on the October 10th meeting. Um, so I wanted to update that. I did also include a copy of the Mayor's Proclamation um, from our last meeting for Manufacturers Week. Tom had um, made the motion to um, acknowledge our manufacturers at our last meeting and so the mayor did that at the October 10th council meeting. Um, let's see. Community Roadside Landscape Partnership Program. This is something that I have attached a resolution, a drafted resolution. It's um, a separate document in your guys' stack because it was not emailed out to you guys. In addition to um, an image of the corner, the west corner at intersection of Highway 57 and um, the Highway 14 exit. Um, where the red is on that image is where we are looking to um, plant some trees um, and things like that just to kind of give a little bit of a, an enhanced feel when um, people come into the community so they're looking at something vibrant um, and hopefully we're going to use, a, our goal is to use all natural species. Um, we're working with sergeants right now to get an estimate on price on what that would be um, to try and bring things that will attract butterflies, birds, stuff like that so um, it kind of brings a nice natural feel. Um, have we yeah. checked with, does Houston do any of that in town? Our local? Um, do they do tree planting and things like that? They, 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 they sell the trees. They don't plant them. Right? Do that but they sell them? Okay. Yeah, okay. That was one that Teresa wasn't aware of when we were talking. So I was at least should? asking what yeah. their role could be in that. We got yeah. two guys in town that transplant trees to Jeff Ray. Well, you know, yeah. Yeah. They got big spade trucks that do that. Okay. No, that's fine. We have I, that's who we reached out to because uh -huh. when asking, or, or nobody knew of anybody local. So, yeah. perfect. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Is, is, a, is a fence behind the trees an option too? Um, like a privacy fence? Yes. Yeah. Just to help. Cause you're the tough yeah. part is, is the, we I went through oh, this about MnDOT. a year a year ago because of MnDOT, but yeah. the other part was is when they were originally zoned to go there, there wasn't a fence required then. Mm -hmm. We okay. talked first, go back to say now. And because they have the um, towing license, they can have the cars out there. Oh yeah, so I was I was I was asked sure. when I first became mayor about there and T and K about cars sitting around for periods of time, and I said yes, not only what we want, we come in, but because they have the towing license, that's within the zoning. But and right, 
the, the other option is too, even though if we want to put a fence, could the city do it at their expense? Yeah, I don't know about that. We couldn't, you know, we couldn't require We can't that. require no, that. No, yeah, no. we could that. work with them maybe right. to find something, unless In we could find a buffer way. that would last season. Right. Yeah. All season. That's the, hard the one thing when we spoke with Brian from Sargent, who he understood what the intent and the purpose of okay. that planting was for. <coughs> um, so something that would remain full all year and would be lower maintenance for everybody. Okay. Um, so yeah. it's not, we're, we're hoping to have something that's got height and things like that. Um, that's got a fuller look to it as well. So, um, but I will look into the other. Bringing up the maintenance, who would take care of that? Would the city take care of it? So Ronnie yeah. Unger, he should be kind of I think should be included in the conversation of what gets put in there. Cause he's the director of the park board. Or park and rec, sorry. I would just think he would yeah, want to know what's going on. Yep. And he's pretty good at that stuff. Yeah. You know, what's good and what's not. Okay. Perfect. Um, should we set up and reach out to him too? We cool. are hoping that we'll have some form of um, design mm -hmm. um, to, to kind of go off of to know what we need for materials and things like that. So essentially what the Roadside Landscape Partnership Program is, is it's a reimbursement program. Um, if funding is available in the region, you can get up to $30,000 of reimbursement and they cover yeah. the expense of all of the materials. Nice. So mulch, um, the trees themselves, all of that. Um, what it doesn't cover is the expense to get them planted. Mm -hmm. um, and when, if you read through the application, the essential goal is to utilize community assets to, to do that, whether it's um, the, the city um, team themselves planting it or um, getting volunteers to yeah. come in and using civic groups to do it as well. Yeah. Um, through my research, I think it's the best to have the city crews do the planting, but then if we want volunteers to come in and assist, um, they can do that if they need volunteer hours or whatever. Um, but if you have all volunteers, there's a lot of reporting that's required to yeah. the state and having to have them sign off on things. And so I, we're just trying to go through it as clean as we can um, and then can involve them in the future. Um, for that, the one thing, if you guys are okay with it, and I will reach out and see if we can get information from Houston as well. Um, a separate document, that I have a drafted resolution um, authorizing the application to be submitted and stating that um, myself and Teresa can be the main points of contact with MnDOT um, throughout this project. So if you guys would just take a second to read through that drafted resolution, give me your thoughts, and. Um, if anybody would be willing to recommend it to council. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we'll need a motion if you would like to move that on, or if there's any other discussion before. Second. We have a motion and a second to move this on towards the city council for their approval. All in favor, say aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Opposed. to give you guys, uh, we talked about the website and some of the updates that I made, um, so I kind of wanted to give you guys a quick little tour of some of the changes that I made on the website. Um, to get to the EDA stuff, we kind of rearranged it, so if you go under Council and Boards, there's Economic Development Authority. If you click into the main page, um, 
this is where everybody can have access to um, the minutes, agendas, and any videos of our meetings over here on the right hand side. And then on the main body of it, I kind of have a little background on the EDA. I didn't change it a whole lot from what Rebecca had. I made a few minor revisions to it, um, just basing the verbiage more off of our comprehensive plan and what it talked about for economic development strategies, things like that. And then in the quick link section, um, I have a section that um, goes over all of you as members. Um, and then it has Teresa's direct contact information as well as mine. Um, we felt as though at this point, unless you guys would rather have your information out there, email, so on, if somebody would prefer to contact one of you directly, um, they can come to the city officers first if they feel as though they would rather talk to a board member. Um, and then let's see here. Under properties, this is a new feature. Um, so now if people want to list their property on our website, um, they can go to the list my property section and I have a form that they can fill out. Um, I do request that they can email photos if they have any, just so we have an image to go with the listing. Um, but they can fill out as much, or I do have some required fields, but as much or as little information as they want to on their property, they get it listed. And then um, under the listings, I couldn't figure out any other way to do this. I wanted to have images and it would not let me. So I created PDFs that people can pull up and print out um, for properties that are available um, for sale within the community. Um, with whether they're for sale or for lease, um, their cost just got really big. <laughs> there we go. Um, an image of the building so they kind of have perspective of what it looks like, in addition to some of the property details, um, the ones that are most frequently requested. Um, as much as they give me, I will put on here. Um, some that have limited information um, is a little more difficult. Um, and then I put directly the contact information for the individual who is looking to list it. Should they choose, they can contact here as well, um, and we can connect them. I have and will retain all of the property details on any um, listing that we have on the website. So, so I just kind of wanted to give you guys a brief little rundown of what our page is currently looking like. The listings are kind of sparse just because not many people know it's a possibility, but. Um, at least there's some out there to kind of get attention. So, anybody have any questions, concerns? I wouldn't mind having my information on the board listing. Okay. So, and w you're comfortable with email and phone, or just email? Probably just email. Just email. Okay. Yeah. I can do that. Does anybody else want their information um, listed at all? I don't. Okay. Because contact me, I'm going to just direct them right to you. Right. Okay. Perfect. <coughs> Anybody else have any other questions, comments, concerns? I'll shut that off so it's not going to blind anybody for the rest of the day. Okay. Uh, let's see. After the website, the next... Um, a couple of other items that I wanted to quick go over with you. Um, the Southeast Minnesota Regional Impact Study that was completed by um, the Southern or Southeastern Minnesota League of Municipalities. Um, the final draft is available, so if anybody would like to review that study, I will not go over it. It's 109 pages in length, so if anybody's bored and would like some reading material, let me know and I can uh, provide you with that link. Um, and then another exciting piece of news that I wanted to share with you that came in after I sent out the um, agenda is we received notice um, last week from Brandon, our engineer, that the city was awarded a million dollars through um, the Minnesota Department of Transportation Local Road Improvement Program. Um, so that is for the completion of 16th Street East out to County Road 15. So um, I kind of just wanted to share that we received that funding for that project um, as well. 
Where is that? Out by the high school. Out the, 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 the plant. Oh, the plant. Oh, city okay. shop. I'll the gravel so road and finish that going east. Towards the Rochester yeah. so that we could possibly get Have a second. people out of the school going mm -hmm. east and <laughs> That'd south. That'd be nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. That's all I have for my coordinator report. Okay. Um, policy and procedure manual update. <laughs> uh, I met with Chris and Tom a week or two ago, a couple weeks ago now, um, to talk about our current policy and procedures for the revolving loan fund. Um, after our last meeting, I started to do a little more digging about where our money actually came from that was funding that. Um, because in the manual, if you recall, there were two separate sets of loan funds and two separate guidelines. Um, I determined that that was because some of the money is state-funded dollars and some of it is federally-funded dollars. Um, and each of them have different requirements with how you can lend the money and then report the money to the state or the federal government. And looking back, it's been very mixed since the 90s when the original money came into the account. Um, so we, we, I kind of for now have put um, the policy and procedural, the manual update on hold. After talking with Chris and Tom, um, we felt as though it would be in our best interest to seek some alternative options to try and find ways to be able to use the money a little bit easier. Um, with that being said, the money that's there can't be used through a revolving loan fund in any of a less strict guideline, I guess you could say. Um, so after our talk, I kept reading a little more on federal requirements, and um, I found one portion of the guidelines that the federal policy had that said we could take federal dollars and reallocate them instead of using it for a revolving loan fund. Um, we could actually reassign those funds to SCDP, which is Small Cities Development Program. Um, in order to do that, you have to have an SCDP application, which the city has been working on through SEMCRA um, for the last several months. Um, so that is one thing I kind of want to present to you guys. I know the council is aware of it already, um, but we could reallocate the funds in our revolving loan fund to be utilized as leverage to get that additional grant funding, which could be up to six hundred thousand to a million dollars. Nine hundred and some thousand. Yeah, that that we could we could get to utilize for um, you know housing rehab stuff for low to moderate income individuals, in addition to commercial rehab. Um, so it would be taken from the EDA's revolving loan fund but would be able to be utilized in a more efficient and effective manner. So um, I guess that's kind of where things are at at this point is to gain insight and thoughts and feelings on um, reallocating those dollars and kind of starting with a fresh revolving loan fund at some point when funds are accessible. So and the short version of that is, is we haven't been compliant for 20 years on the federal side and rather than have it taken away from us using it to leverage the almost million dollars in the small cities thing makes a lot of sense so because with the way that the guidelines are on that we none of the loans that we already have on the books for the revolving loan fund meet the guidelines so I don't know what reporting was done in the past but the loans that were given it's very specific you have to be able to create so many jobs that you prove that you offered to people under a certain income amount so pretty much none of the loans that we have revolving right now just met that one criteria. There's other criteria that we're pretty much out of compliance on. So yeah. I, how that happened over the 20 years, I don't know, but. Can you trace back where that money came from exactly? Yeah, I, I know every project that it came from. And that's how we know it came from the federal side on those dollars. Okay, Who has so the federal was the original funding of the loan revolving? Mm -hmm. And there's funds that came from the state as well, only $5,200 of it. But we're also talking with the state about if we can just 
sent it back to them or if because right now we have to report on that money and that reporting has been being done inaccurately as well because it's been in one pool of money they haven't been being tracked separately so it's hard to identify where that fifty two hundred dollars actually sets if we have retained it the whole time if it's lent out anything like that because it should be being tracked um, separately and it hasn't been so um, we're trying to kind of clean up this mess and be able to start fresh and by starting fresh another thing it'll allow us to do is if it's not federal or state dollars we can set whatever guidelines we can fund whatever projects we can do whatever we want with the money that is up to the council or the EDA to, to set those guidelines and so we would have a lot more freedom and we'll be able to help out a lot more um, without having those restrictions. So are you saying that the funds the EDA has charge over are all state and federal? None came from our local council? Correct. That revolving loan fund is state and federal dollars. The revolving loan fund? Correct. But the EDA has other funds? The only other funds we have will be the facade improvement program that we just funded $20,000 toward for 2019. Okay. Other than that, all those funds that we have on our balance sheet for available to loan or are already loaned out, those 5,200 was from the state, the rest right. were all federal. Yep. Is how that started the program back in 1991 or 92. Where they allocated some for job creation, is okay. what it was purely for. And it had to be for if you wanted to apply for a loan, if sir, but correct yep. me if I'm wrong, but you had to offer at least, you had to create two jobs and offer them to people under 50% under the average local So in 1992 when, is when our EDA was established. originated? Yep. Yep. And the crazy thing is, is I don't know how the, you know, I do, we do government reporting all the time and it's supposed to be accurate for 26 years now we've had revolving loans that didn't meet any of the criteria of what the fund was funded for. I don't know how that. Yeah, and I. Who, I mean, would our uh, financial employee person have been responsible for the that EDA reporting? The EDA has been responsible for that reporting because it's been the EDA dollars, and that to what actually I have reporting come due at the beginning of in October, and I start that what started to make me dig into it even more because I wasn't comfortable with some of the selections that had been made on previous years. I think it, I was lucky because I had a banking background, but there was something that just didn't quite seem right. And um, I submitted it and I was like, God, that just does not seem accurate. So I called one of my CETA teammates and he goes, yeah, they're done wrong all the time. Like, you're not the only community. Like, he goes, I can guarantee you 95% of the people reporting dollars are not reporting the right amount. But he goes, you should really try and get it straightened out just for record keeping sake and going mm -hmm. forward. What the impression I got, and I can't say that this is definite, I don't know what the state actually uses the reporting for beyond verifying that money is actually being utilized and circulated and not just sitting somewhere untouched. So if it was sitting for $5,200 for the last X amount of years, that wouldn't be good? They, yeah, they want to take it and reallocate it. Okay. And can we find out why we got the 5200 We got it because um, I can't recall what business it was. Um, but somebody had said they were going to create 10 jobs, so they got so much money for each of those 10 jobs and only ended up creating like two of the 10. So they got to, we got to keep 5,200 for the jobs they created and then we had to send the remaining 41,000 back to the state. So it was money that we received for that business creating jobs within our community. So we actually used that money then, somehow. The original 5,200 was used and left out and paid and back. And paid back. And that right. person paid it back. Yep. Since then it hasn't been used for that purpose. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, and then that's the state 5,200. Yep. Right. There's another yeah. 300,000 or whatever, three, 400,000 of federal yeah. dollars that are in there. $336,000 of federal money. 
So, so when it's used and then paid back, you're required to give it back? No, nope. you, you just keep revolving. Re you just keep revolving it. You get both it. the, you as long as you have the loan that meets yeah, the criteria. You get the loan mm -hmm. plus mm -hmm. the interest and you start loaning that back out. Yep. Yeah. And any money that goes into this because it was federal dollars, any money that gets put into that pool of money becomes true. federal dollars. They're state and federal. Okay. But like, state, right? yeah. yeah, so like yeah. that interest that goes back into it has to be treated as federal money because it was made off of From the federal money that was lent out. So that's why like you can't even decipher what we've earned in interest over the last 26 years to maybe keep that. like. It's just federal. What was paid on federal becomes federal. So just so we transfer this cash balance we have, the stuff we have loaned out already is that's just the way it is. So until it comes back. Until it comes back. Until it comes and back. then it would be reassigned. So we reassign yep. this to these small city dollars. Yep. Small cities so over the next two or three years they because we don't control that program, the Correct. the small cities organization does that. Say they pick two or three commercial places that qualify for some rehabilitation. Yep. And part of that's a revolving loan. Yep. There's some grant and loan money. As that loan money gets paid back, then we would be able to allocate that to what we wanted because it's, it's been transferred from the federal program to the small cities. Then as we receive it back, is it still under the federal guidelines? It will remain under, well, is small city federal or state. It would remain, remain under those guidelines when it comes Whatever back. Whatever program they're, yeah. okay, right. Yeah. yeah, so it would have to still fall under those small cities program so guidelines. Small cities guidelines are much, more lean, looser, more lean looser looser than, yep. than the federal they, guidelines that are set there. And they still, they still have low to moderate income restrictions, but it's easier to work with and you can do more with the money. Like, I don't believe job creation is any part of it. It's just income levels that play a factor into it. And commercial is slightly different than the housing rehab. I'm not 100% sure what the, the commercial guidelines are, but I just, I think it would be good to leverage them because we could get more out of the money mm -hmm. rather than sit here and have the same struggle that we're having right now. Um, and if we are able to at some point get funds to regenerate a revolving loan fund that have no strings attached, more people, it would, it would be easier to help more people in the long run. Okay. So the annual report that you sent in to state and federal? Um, I sent it to the state. Uh, mm -hmm. I, because at that time, I did not realize the difference in the money until I started to dig into it a little bit more. I asked, when I sent it in, I asked the gal for a report to show me where the money came from. And when I pulled up her spreadsheet, she had one loan from the state and the rest of them were all federal. Um, and that's how I found out was through the state. <laughs> so. Okay, so the federal has not been looking for any reports obviously that we should have sent in. Well, we've been reporting it all in the state we've report. We've been reporting it all in the state. Mm -hmm. And who reported that in previous years? The EDA coordinators that were previously here. And I'm guessing what happened is one just followed the suit of mm -hmm. the other because that had been mm -hmm. done for how many ever years and they didn't think that there was anything different or wrong with it because it had never been corrected. Um, so everybody just kind of did the same thing along the way. So that's kind of where we're at. So I take it we never get audited. Not yet. <laughs> at least not TDA. Not, not yet. Oh. <laughs> Every 50 years. So we're new. We're doing uh, another 20, <laughs> four <laughs> years. <laughs> Right. But at least it's every 50 years is that a What do you need from EDA on this? Uh, we're all good? Yeah, I think. I just think everybody's like knowing that that's kind of the page that I think the council is on is yeah. looking to reallocate our EDA dollars and knowing and understanding and <coughs> being okay with the fact that for a while we may not re have a revolving loan fund. But at this point, it hasn't been actively utilized. I looked back and I think there's been like a loan once a year for the last couple of years and they're smaller loans. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for the most part, everything that the money was borrowed on with exception to like the Trail Creek one where they're doing some internal renovations for their business, um, I think our facade improvement program will be able to handle most projects. So okay. just kind of 
kind of an update. Alright. Next you got coffee break? Yeah, okay. I have a calendar in your guys' packet and I know we talked about um, trying to determine some time and figuring out an appropriate schedule um, for our little coffee break concept. Um, so I figured I'd include a calendar and see what your guys' thoughts were if we want to do it monthly um, and if there's a day of each month that we thought would be good to be consistent and I know we talked about alternating mornings and afternoons and stuff like that so um, just to maybe kind of get things penciled in and I can work on the more specific details. So morning one, when, when would you start? What time do you think you would want to do in the morning? Um, that's kind of up to you guys. I don't know if like a 10 a.m. like a mid-morning break would be something that business owners would be open to or if it would need to be first thing in the morning. Um, I'd prefer it to be before the business started because a lot of small businesses don't have the availability to say, oh, it's 10 o'clock, I think I'll run down somewhere and have coffee for somebody. Right. So like 7.30 in the morning, what, what time are you? 7.30, 8 o'clock. 7.30, 7.30, 7.30. Just for business people, correct? Or anybody? Well, I think, I, I guess I'll leave that up to you guys. An open for discussion. If for anybody, there's a lot of people who would prefer the 10 o'clock version for mm -hmm. 7.30. Well, we're also looking at an evening one, too. Okay. You know. So, and what, just refresh on what would be the, so I get, I'm, I'm not on the EDA, I'm just downtown or somewhere in town, I own a business or I don't. And I hear there's this coffee break when you get there at 7 30 and have coffee with the media with what I might come in. Yeah. For me, I feel like that would be our opportunity to be able to present to the public some of the things that we're working on or things that we're doing um, economic development wise. Um, so they can get familiar with what we do and maybe become more comfortable with us as a group. I think there are a lot of people who either don't know the EDA exists or are uninformed or uneducated. So I think it would be a great opportunity to be able to showcase the things that we are doing for the community and the businesses within it. So, so just an EDA update, what's going on in yeah. the development wise. Yep. And I think it's a great networking opportunity for those individuals as well. Some of them who may be generally stuck in their offices, not able to communicate with everybody else, just to kind of see what's going on out in the community. I guess that didn't really help the time question, did it? <laughs> no, I don't know. It doesn't matter to me, but I mean, I'm just thinking that yeah. if there's, you're going to have the general public there to inform them, 7.30 in the morning, a lot of them are kind of, ah. Yeah, but that was kind of the discussion we had, too. You know, one, uh, we do it monthly, whatever. No, you could do one in the morning, and then the next month you could do the one in the evening, say, at 5, 5.30. People get off work, they can come, you know, S and some you businesses get too. Off work at 5.30 in the morning, headed, going to be headed to get home in the air to go to a coffee. Huh? Not all of them. I mean, I think part of the, the original intent was that, you know, why it was called coffee break was it wasn't geared towards the business community, was yeah. to take a mid-morning break or a mid-afternoon break to get out 10 minutes. Stop by, hey, we got three minutes out of what we, we're, we're doing this month. Here's a new program. If you want to visit our buses here, great, have a cup of coffee. If not, you got your three, four minute briefing and off you go. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I kind yeah. of let, you know, versus after work, and we're not going to get the general plan. That's just another meeting. Sounds like a beer break. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Better not be coffee at 5 30. You might get more if you have it uh, somewhere where they have a. Yeah. <laughs> we might not get away with that. <laughs> yeah, a license. But no, I mean, so you could do a two o'clock break if you want to. If, if, if I think we could take 
whatever time you want it to be. It doesn't have to be consistent. Yep. It could be a couple of early morning, a couple of mid morning, a couple of mid afternoon. Mm -hmm. Try it for a year. Yeah, see if it works. Uh, and mm -hmm. yeah, and see if anybody gets value out of it. And how we measure that is if anybody comes, then do we have more people applying for our program? Right. You know, it's a way to. And how we're getting this out to these people? Okay. I would say social media and things like Website that. Website, yeah. Facebook. You can put it in the city uh, newsletter. I've never heard of it. <laughs> With the bills. The bills. Yeah. You can put it in the city newsletter. City newsletter, city, city website. Do that. City Facebook. Yeah, you get a, you get a utility bill. <laughs> Yeah, I agree too. You do get a utility bill. And, and that comes in huge. <laughs> yeah, it covers a page and a half. So you got to take and downsize it to get it to print on my computer. <laughs> it comes on paper. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can print it out, but I just read it on yeah. 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 the yeah. mail. Yeah. But some people get it online. Instead yeah. of getting their bill. Yeah. Yeah. But those be, some of paying. those bills are deductible. <laughs> my accountant said, so we yeah. said, take care of it. Get them to me. Well, well if you need to get them yeah, back, you just come down to the city and say, give me a right. list of what I see left. So, um, so as far as day of the week, or would it about make sense to do it right after our meetings? We'll give you a dollar amount. You know, so if we meet today, it would be make sense to do it either sometime later in that same week or the next week. That way, oh, yeah. we just discuss our business. It's fresh in our minds. Yeah. If somebody would have a question about that small cities thing, it wasn't from three weeks ago on my eye. I don't right. remember what. Right. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. So we did the next day or the Thursday, just said pick a time and where we can make it to make it. Not yep. all of us are going to make it either at every no. week. Right. So. Right. so, like, say the first Thursday of every month? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Let's try it. Mm -hmm. See how it goes. Do you want to start off doing it first thing at 7.30 in the morning, or would you prefer... Or do you do it near nine o'clock coffee break? I don't know. Well, I think here, here's a suggestion. If we pick seven thirty, nine thirty, and say two o'clock, those right. three times. I'm assuming you're here. Are you here the first Thursday of every month? Yeah. So you'll be yeah. here to be able to, to coordinate that to run it because all of us are going to be inconsistent depending on where we're at in our mm -hmm. business for that week. Yep. Yeah. And just over the calendar that some are 7.30, some are 9.30, some are 2 o'clock, whatever it is, and, and spread them out. Yep. And then whoever can make, make it. The big thing is if you're here, you've got the information for the programs yep. and to yep. facilitate it. Because yep. if we try to find something that works for all of our schedules together, we're not going to find mm -hmm. it. <laughs> and then here's my next question for you guys. Um, so one of my team members um, up in Frazee, she did one. Um, and they um, are looking to have businesses host them. Mm -hmm. um, do you think we want to try and see if businesses are willing to do that? Or do we start out and have one stable, since we're changing the times, do we have one stable location? So everybody kind of gets into a routine of knowing, hey, first Thursday of every month, this is where I get to go for my coffee. Like, what are your guys' thoughts? It's going to be easier if you pick one spot, I think, to start with mm -hmm. until people get used to it. And then you can move it, per se. But if you move it, people are going to not show because they don't know where it is. Or mm -hmm. I'd be interested to get the, if you had it at one point, to get the feedback for the people that would show up to that as to whether they would want to host it. Yeah. Okay. And mm -hmm. then kind of take it from there. Okay. That makes sense. Yep. Any recommendations on a location? Do we just... Do we do it in here? Do we? Well, not everybody likes to go to City Hall. Right. No. But right do you on. pick? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's hard to believe, I, but I, could I you not. pick? Uh, I don't know. Like Erdman, I mean, somewhere where they have seating, or five stores where they got seating. You know, and, uh, I don't know. That's. We should probably, yeah, keep it 504 maybe or something like that, just in case it gets bigger through the year and then. Well, that's Once we have followers. Yeah, we could do it wherever. I don't care. But Daniels is going to start serving the Trail Peak Coffee as yes. a coffee here oh, yeah, next yeah. month. So let's do that. At least if we did the first couple there, ask if they want yeah. to host the first. And they've got options. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
um, watch them pitch at one million cups that day. What's oh, one million cups? It is essentially, um, it happens at 9 a.m. the first Wednesday of every month in Rochester, um, behind Blue Duck Kitchen there. Where's Blue Duck Kitchen? Um, it's on Broadway across from, uh, what used to be the new one? Where the new one on the state office is on Broadway, mm. South Broadway, I'm trying to think. Google it. Yeah, <laughs> next to U.S. Bank. There's a U.S. Bank right next door to it. Um, but essentially it's entrepreneurs coming and pitching their ideas. And some of them are in the early stages of their product development. Some of them have already started and are relatively successful, but looking for ideas to expand, um, things like that. Um, last month I went and the gentleman that was on Shark Tank for the adult sandbox or whatever it was, where He's out of tastings, and you literally go play with like big diggers and things <laughs> like that. It's a great place. He, they do that all the time. Uh, he, uh, he was there and talked about what he's done as a business owner, how he got it started. So it's a six minute pitch, and then the, the presenter asks the community who is there listening to them um, for ideas, recommendations. Um, if they have needs, like where they can go, what avenues they can seek to, to help them continue with their business plan. So it's very interesting. It's a lot of fun. What time is that? 9 a.m. How long are you usually going? Um, you're usually out of there by 10. Okay. Yep. So it's a great networking opportunity too to get out and meet other people <coughs> in the <coughs> business community. So. Um, Okay, I'll get that scheduled and I'll send you guys an email once I've got a few of those um, coffee time scheduled. Um, and then I also added on the agenda 2019 Smith contribution. I know we had approved through the budget $1,000 for that. Um, Tim Penny had stopped by and visited with Teresa, um, leaving this totally up to the board on what you want to do. Um, they're seeking instead of $1,000, $1,200. Um, but you can give any contribution that you'd like. So I just wanted to bring that up that they, they did ask for an increased amount of money for the 2019 contribution, um, whether that's something the board is comfortable with or we want to just keep it where it's at. Did they um, say why they wanted to increase? Um, I was not privy to that conversation, so I guess, and I don't, I never thought to ask Teresa, um, what they were looking to do with the additional funding um, for that. So I don't have a good answer to that question. I can definitely um, can I ask if the answer is this. Southern Minnesota Initiative Foundation. Can it's a good thing, I think. It really is. But, but for, for your and and members, them, why are they doing it? One, why they want more. Two, can yes. you just bring back more information of yep. what Smith is? Yep, I just can do that. So yep. Well, Tim Penny came in and spoke to the council, council yes. two minutes ago and had asked for more money and we said we'd consider it, but we didn't. And it was basically just that their need is greater, especially for daycare. The study that came out for the, the daycare study that we got some information on as far as the space is needed in Dodge County. Like they were just asking everybody for a little more. And I think our contribution has been $1,000 for quite a while. For a while, yeah. So. so is the council giving money also, or just the EDA? It's the EDA. It was the EDA budget that was presented to us. So the EDA approves that then. The Council approves the EDA budget. So what money are we spending here on contributions and coffee? Federal or state? No, we're a lot of the loan funds. It doesn't come out of the loan. No. So EDA gets allocated so much of the general levy. Okay. Much so dollars for budget. the operations type of thing. Um, okay. None of the general levy money has been used to fund the revolving loan fund. Okay. To your <coughs> question earlier, which I had thought that's how that money got there. Was it just they like spilled a little bit in each year until they built the mm -hmm. pot up? But apparently, yeah. Yeah. No. we didn't no. do that at all. No. No. <laughs> so it's just part of the EDA's <laughs> annual budget. Like, yeah. And then that money, like Smith, when you give them that thousand twelve hundred dollars it turns around, and I don't remember how much in return, but it's like the, the amount they get comes back, and Tim, he told us too, but it was like, I don't remember the percentage, but it was a lot more coming back to the local area than they get. Because with that money, they also matching funds. Yeah. They have leverage on leverage other programs. Other programmings and grants. And but 
the big loan in our community was the Castle Maryland Nursery Group. The Cat yeah. Nursery Group mm -hmm. had a big Smith loan when they first started years ago. Twenty some years. Have ago. that paid off now. So yeah, they had a. They had that, and then they had a county loan. Yeah. yeah, they had several of them, but the Smith ones have all paid off. So. Okay, I'll bring back more. I know that's something that we know, don't have to necessarily address, right? Because it gets paid after the first year. But mm -hmm. um, actually, I'll we would we'd have to approve have it before the budget's done. Yeah. Um, when is that meeting next month? It'll be the week before. We would have time at our next at meeting our next to meeting approve it. To yeah. it. Okay, yeah. perfect. We meet the 12th I'll meeting. bring back additional yeah. information yeah. on Smith. That way, um, yeah, for those send that it aren't out. aware, and I'll, yeah, I'll bring some materials. Both, that way you can look at it beforehand, too. Because we'll be approving the final budget on the next too. What's that? Where is he administering that? Through? Oh, Otana. Oh, Otana is our main office. Yeah. 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 Over by the old orphanage. Yep. Yep. It's yep. so, Yeah, they... It does. A, it's a really good program. They make loans back to help people. Yep. Some of them are free. Some aren't. Yeah. No. Nope. So, is there any other business? Did just to go back up to number five. I don't yeah. know if we touched on the small cities development program, the grant application. You said something about the grant application was 119 pages, but you had something in our packet that showed the districts. Oh, oh no, that's, no, that, that's, that's the, the Southeast Minnesota League of Municipalities the is 109 pages. Yeah, the impact. Oh, there. okay. But um, the for the grant application, I do have more information. I just don't know how much of it you want me to go into on it. Um, so in your guys' packet, there are two maps. Um, map let's see, the housing rehab program, the um, area outlined in green, that's the target area for the rehabilitation. Um, that was where the most densely needed work was done for qualifying applications. Um, yeah, go for it. Okay. I just, I don't want to interrupt, but, no, but just to kind of refresh your back last spring, summer, we made the announcement and everybody a lot of people, most people in town got that mailing with that survey to fill out, whether you owned a home in that area or, or, or commercial. So I got one at home and I got one for the businesses downtown to see if, if there was a program available, would you be interested in using it? What would you use it for? That type of thing. And we had to have a really high response rate to qualify. And everybody in the city got one. The, yeah, it was mailed. It was mailed. And it's a, it's a program that's not administered by the city in any way. It's that outside organization. They're the ones oh, buying the whole it thing. Oh, was the thing that we did at the school. No, 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 no not it was a, it was just a one-page letter you got in yeah. the mail. But anyway, what that is, it's administered by them. They got a big enough response okay. back. Semcra. Semcra. Okay. Southeast Minnesota Municipal Something Housing Restoration Association. But anyway, they administer the program. They put together the map. The city didn't have any input in that. They administer the funds. They pick the project. It's their program. We just had as a community, they wanted a really high response rate. I think we had 48%, yep. high 40s, and it was the highest response rate that, that they've experienced, and so they feel really confident we're going to get this money to do this with this grant application. So I just no, wanted to okay. Yeah. It was sent out to just over 1,900 owner-occupied um, properties. 708 of them were returned of that sample that was sent. Um, which was 40% roughly. 24% um, of the respondents were income eligible, so in order to be able to access funds for these programs, you have to have an income below a certain guideline. And um, of those 24% of respondents who are income eligible, 80% of them are interested in utilizing funds from the program to do something to their home, which is a really high response rate. They always shoot for 50% of total survey sent to be sent back, but they rarely ever get that. And so they were very pleased. Um, Karen and Buffy were both super pleased with the responses that we got because they um, it demonstrated a major need for it. So it'll definitely strengthen the application. Um, and the maps that are included in your guys' packet, the first one that has target area A and target area B, that's the target area for the housing rehabilitation dollars that they identified. And then the second one is for the commercial rehabilitation. Um, Can you tell me how that shook out as far as uh, housing versus commercial? How they did that? Um, yeah. I can't speak to the specifics. They have 
um, when Karen does this, when they send out all of it, they analyze the data like to with a fine tooth comb and they somehow based on the responses they get and the location of those responses is how they determine where the needs lie. Um, and the commercial area, obviously that's the most densely zoned area. I mean, that's a lot of commercial property in a small space and they're the oldest buildings. So the older the property, the better the application because they want to be able to retain and um, revitalize those structures without having to you know, demolish or anything like that. They want to be able to maintain those properties. So that's why like the downtown area um, for commercial is the one that's being focused on. And they, just to kind of fill it, so the application was actually sent in last week, I signed it last week, and right now they're going just for the residential part of it, and they'll come back and revisit the commercial later. Because what their intentions are, how they said they were doing it, is they want to present the strongest application possible. You know, with just the response they had with what Stephanie said about the, the housing and how many we got back, how many are eligible, and then how many would actually do it was such a strong number. They felt that we could get the whole thing for the housing and then come back in a later year or years and come back and, and take a, a swing at the commercial. Um, so right now it's just the, the residential from what I understand what I signed. Yes. From what they said the, that was at, the meeting, at, the council, um, at the council meeting. And that was they were going to come back to the rental, correct? The rental commercial. The rental. rental commercial. So, like the commercial actual, like business dwelling, I think. Well, for the commercial buildings building will be in there, but the rental stuff. The is rental not. stuff is not. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The non-owner occupied. Yes. Yeah. Owner occupied housing and commercial. Yep. Are part of it. Yeah. Yep. And how they chose it, from my my other conversations with them when I when I signed it was. They chose the areas with the density they needed, with the projects they thought would get done, to have the strongest application to get the money. And that's where I just wanted to be really clear. We have no, when somebody comes and says, well, why isn't this block included in my house? The city has nothing to do with it. All we did is say, please go ahead and send the surveys out, get them back, and if you want to fill out the application for us on our behalf, we, we don't have any control over who or how much or what project. And, and we don't see any is square? Um, they're based out of Wabasha, I believe. Uh, uh, yes. And we don't see any of their plans. Or plans. We don't see any input. Yeah. Um, and like when an application comes in, assuming we're awarded <coughs> these grant dollars, when somebody applies for funding to do rehabilitation on their property, that doesn't go through the city. That I goes through their um, office. Get that for the we have any other items for uh, December EDA that anybody wants included right now? Or? Hey, bringing Christmas trees. That's you. That's me. <laughs> All in favor? See what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> so, if hearing none, we'll uh, adjourn. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Move. Got a motion. We need a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody. Aye. Is that me? Is that rich? Yep. Okay.